Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Ethan's Angle podcast, the podcast for entrepreneurs, the podcast for hustlers, people going for their thing. My name is Ethan. I'm I'm your host of this amazing show, and um, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm from Salt Lake, and I'm growing my business. And this content, just like all my other content, is about documenting the journey. I'm really about documenting the journey. I just posted something tonight. Um, it was like a Kobe Bryant audio of a reel. I was watching reels. I like to do that a lot. It's like watch reels and then use that audio and play it over like clips of myself. Um, I really liked this audio. It was He was talking about how stories are like how we communicate and how stories are like you start with a story in order to change the world essentially. So, you know, I thought that was really cool. And like Kobe Bryant's situation, it's like his story of hard work, his story of dedication to his craft inspired so many people, right? And the documentation of that story is is what allowed that to change so many lives. And so I think about that a lot, you know, like telling the story is super important. And, and I, and I kind of want to talk about that tonight because I think telling a story is important on the one hand from a marketing perspective, right? A lot of people try to make ads. I try to just tell the story of my business and it really has worked out well for me. And it's really become kind of, kind of my top marketing strategy is don't try to make commercials and like, like pitch people on something, just tell the story and be you and, and document that journey and do interesting and exciting things. And typically that's the best type of content as of all. Right. And, um, so I think on the one hand, it's a, a good, good marketing move. On the other hand though, kind of like Kobe was saying in, in the reel that I posted, you need to start with a story in order for, you know, like lives to eventually change and people to be affected by your content, right. Or your story or in general at all, it has to start from a story. And so I always, I've mentioned a bunch, but I think about a lot, my kids listening to this right now, that's insane. That's insane. Like what up little Ethan, Ethan Jr. That's just dope to me. Like I think about that a lot. Like, you know, my kid watching me go through the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, learning these lessons, you know, learning how to be a better man learning how to, um, you know, navigate things, failing, succeeding. I, I think about that a lot. So I don't know. I just want to kind of update a little bit more of my story tonight. I want to, you know, with that in mind, like, first off, I think this is a good marketing thing. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. I really think that it is. And I, I hope people find value in following along. It's not like, oh, I'm tricking you into like eventually coming to thirst and buy some of my crap. No, like, that's not what I'm doing. Like, I hope that, you know, sometimes that it may lead to that. Yeah, that's awesome. Obviously, that's awesome. But I also think, you know, like, I hope that you're getting value from the me documenting my journey of entrepreneurship. Um, what's going on right now in my story? Well, okay, it's 2023. It's early. Um, I've talked about a lot in my content lately, how I'm really focusing on my current stores. And I'm really trying to squeeze the lemon, as I say, you know, get the most out of what I have right now, instead of trying to open a bunch more in a mediocre way, right? I want to make what I've got really, really good. I want to, I want to become more impressive, increase our gross margin, improve the operations at our stores, improve the culture in the company, improve how well people are trained and how good they are at their job in our company, improve how much they like their jobs, improve how much customers like coming to the store. I think that these are all like really, really, really important things that I get so sometimes excited about the growth and like being on like the next big new thing that I forget to like really hone in on some of these like um, fundamental principles. So I, I think right now what my story is really learning how to be a good operator and be a good boss, be a good you know CEO of my company, president of my company, and uh, learning how to communicate better. So what does that look like for me? I'm really diving into like tactics of how to manage our cost of goods, how to manage our labor, how to, you know, have better systems and processes, how to communicate more effectively with my team. Like what meetings do I have and when? How efficient are those meetings? How long are they? What do you say in them? And I think that the, all that stuff's really important. Um, I'm learning a lot from it. I, I want to nail those things in before I move on with my growth because I want to be like, I, 
you know, I've been hearing a lot in, in some of the content that I've been listening to. It's not about the number of units that you have. It's more about how much, you know, profit and how impressive and how well run and, and, and the culture is in the units that you do have. And so, you know, I think I might have, it's not that I miss, like I don't regret opening the stores that I have, but I'm like, okay, I opened them. Now this next phase is very necessary for me to, you know, hone them in. And so that's really what I'm focused on. It's been difficult. Um, we're struggling a lot of different areas, feeling the pressure of them for sure. The realities of, it's just like when the scale is bigger, it, you know, things are wins and losses are more drastic. Meaning if you, you know, if you hit a good marketing campaign, it's way more impactful on the bottom line across all the stores. Or if you have like lots of stores, it's it's way more impactful, right? You know, for example, if you're to do an extra $2,000 in sales in one week at one store, it's $2,000 extra, which is great, but it's really great when that's times by seven, you're looking at 14,000, right? But also it's true on the flip side. If you're losing some money and you times that by seven stores, it's also extremely more impactful in a negative way. And so that's interesting. That's difficult. <laughs> and to be honest, I made a bunch of I've made a bunch of like cash flow mistakes. I've made a bunch of operational mistakes, culture mistakes along the way that have multiplied in, in a bad way. I made a lot of good, good moves as well that have multiplied in a great way with having all these stores, but you know, both are true. And, and so it's, it, there's just a lot more on the line, which I think is, you know, it makes you be more on your toes. It makes you be more ready. A um, couple of lessons that I feel like I've learned recently. Um, first is every little cost matters. Every little, everything that you're spending money on could be a dollar going back into the right things in your business. Could be going into something, you know, $20 a week per store that you shouldn't necessarily be spending on your linen service. Okay, times that by 20 or times that by seven stores, that's 140 a week. Times that by four weeks in a month, right? Like you can do the math. I can't quickly on the fly like that. But whatever that is, what is that? 400 times seven, 240. Is it 640? I don't know. I don't know, whatever, you know, five, 600 bucks that you save in linen, you put five, 600 bucks into Facebook ads, run a location based around your stores with a, you know, call to action of join our email list or, or Facebook lead form ads for catering. You could turn 600 bucks into 6,000, 16,000, 20,000 in, you know, down payments for catering events or whatever that may be. Every little cost matters. It's crazy. I, I've, I very much like thought a lot of the time that, you know, oh, what well, it doesn't really matter. Let's just, just, just get it on there. Like there's bigger, bigger, bigger things that we can spending our time on than saving 20 bucks a week per store on linen service. But then when you look at it again in that bigger picture and you think, man, what could I have done with that $600 and a, you know, if I applied it to offense and instead of defense, it gets crazy. And so yeah, I'm looking at that a lot, and and it's another example. It's like, yeah, I'm not really worried that we're spending, you know, twenty bucks a case extra on limes by ordering it from this vendor rather than like going out of our way to maybe do this, get it from this place or whatever. Again, that multiplies quickly into you know hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars quickly, and you know what could that money be done with on a, from an offensive perspective. So I'm thinking about that a lot and I'm really diving into like every little cost and um, being efficient with things and really being smart and strategic and a good businessman, um, I think is paying off a lot for me. Another thing I think that I'm, has like been a big learning lesson for me, like I've had a lot of difficult and like hard and, you know, strategic conversations that I don't necessarily agree with everyone on, aka like whether it be my partners or different vendors or people like other corporate members or, you know, just like anytime you're dealing with like a, any type of business, you know, communication or deal that you're having with any of those people, like I just mentioned, you don't always agree. You don't always agree. And I think um, how you kind of handle those situations is it's really, really impactful. Like, um, patience. I think patience and empathy are huge. Like 
patience for other people's perspectives is massive. Like, what could they be feeling in this situation? How are they feeling? What, you know, what have, what have we done to like, or what have I done? And what, and what should I be, you know, more patient about that they're feeling, you know, on there and just putting yourself in their shoes. It's just crazy. Like how these fundamental principles of like just being a good person, you know, patience being more empathetic, man, if you apply those to business, like if you can practice and nail those just in life in general and they translate and you're practicing them in business, I think it's, it's really, really important. So yeah, I've had a lot of difficult conversations lately and, um, I think, yeah, one of my big takeaways is, man, if I could go back, I really think about every single thing that I'm going to say before I say it. <laughs> and I probably would deploy more patience and empathy for the other side and just literally always take the higher road, like literally always take the higher road um, because I think in the long run, it it's really, it doesn't mean you don't say what you mean or don't say what is going to be best for the business. I think that's different, but to some degree, I think it's very much the best move to be patient, take the higher road on almost every situation and think about, okay, it like what I was just saying, like, it's not about not saying what's best for the business. It's literally not best for the business, even though you think it might be to interject your feedback, interject, like what you think, interject the way that you feel or the way that it actually is and says someone straight on something that might be good for that micro moment, maybe for your satisfaction, but truly, truly thinking about it from a bigger perspective of like, okay, based on all the variables that are going to happen after I say this thing, is this actually the right move? Probably not. <laughs> and so, um, uh, I've really, I've been putting those situations a lot lately. It's been forcing me to grow for sure. I definitely haven't handled them all the right way. Definitely have a lot, had a lot of uh, missteps, but I think I'm learning. I think, you know, they say adversity is the, is foundational for success. And I think that's totally true. And I think almost even more, it's like the way that you can take adversity and then have the humility to be like, okay. I just messed up in the way that I acted. <laughs> I didn't do that. I didn't handle myself correctly in that, in that situation. Let me learn from it. Let me also not dwell on it and like just be devastated from it. Like I messed up. If you need to say sorry, say sorry. If you need to fix things, fix things. But like, how do you respond to it? How do you respond to the adversity? Um, does it just get you down? Does it get you bummed? Do you keep making the same mistakes over and over again? Or do you learn from them and, and apply the knowledge? And so I'm not saying that I'm killing it on this front at all. I'm, but I think awareness is the first step to everything. Right. And so, uh, really think about that a lot. And, uh, yeah, there's a couple of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm handling in my story right now. It's been good. It's been fun. I've been really enjoying the people I've been with at this stage in the business. Um, it's a foundational moment. No question. I feel like I say that a lot in my content, like, you know, and it, that I feel like I'm going through the moment that's foundational and pivotal for the successful long-term business. But how like every moment is that, right? <laughs> if you really think about it, like lots of moments along the way are like that, you know, like this feels pivotal, pivotal. A year ago felt pivotal. And the reality is both of them were, and most moments are. And I think like taking it really seriously is is important and like acknowledging that in every step is important so yeah i'm thinking about that i'm thinking about like um i'm just uh i'm i'm trying to stay extremely grateful and i'm trying to stay uh just just continuing to be happy i'm i feel like i'm really happy right now and um i'm really grateful and i like the people i'm with and uh yeah i hope if my kids are listening like i'm saying <laughs> that they know um uh, that i love them and i uh and i hope they watch and like learn just like i was talking about learn from the mistake like learn and it, like make changes in your life based on the mistakes and you know successes that i'm having as ethan and um uh, the ones that i'm sharing because I, I hope it helps so love you all love the ethan nation for following along i appreciate everyone whether you're a thirst customer whether you're my family whether you're uh, just an Ethan fan. I really, really appreciate it. Um, 
I I don't know if I, where I'd be without all the supporters, including my team, by the way. Freaking love my team right now, especially. I have a really, really awesome team. All right, love you guys. Ethan Zangle Pod, late night here at the Underground, it has been a success. Don't know what episode this is. Don't really care. Just another episode having fun on the Ethan's Angle. Love you all. Keep grinding. Keep hustling. We'll talk to you next time.